What's going on guys and welcome back to the channel. I'm Chris, this is 4K Motoring and behind us is another big Corvette project. This car is getting to be about 22 years old now. It's a 2001 Corvette and as you would expect from an American 22 year old car that's been in the south between Texas and North Carolina all its life, it's having some issues especially with some of the components that use plastic parts that get brittle with heat and time. The issue I'm having with this car and what started this whole project, this has kind of evolved, is that the air conditioner decided that on the driver's side, it's still going to blow nice and hot. And that's been amazing. I've had no issues there. It's pretty quick. Uh, it does really well, actually, on the driver's side. However, the passenger side, since this is the dual zone system, has been blowing straight heat. There's no air conditioning whatsoever. It is just hot, hot heat. That's it. As you might imagine, in the summertime of North Carolina, it's about 95 degrees outside today. That's problematic. As you guys can see, I already tried a couple fixes. I first suspected the actual HVAC controller, the head unit itself was the issue. I found a company on eBay that actually does full refurbishment of them. They replace all the incandescent bulbs with the LED bulbs, which is pretty fantastic goes through all the solders, make sure everything's working right, does a function test, and then sends it back. And that was about $100. Again, there's a couple of eBay sellers that do that. I'll link the one that I use down below. I tried that and it looks a whole lot better. Those LED lights and having every light work, since a lot of mine were burned out, looks a lot better, but still having the same issue with the passenger side blowing heat. Doing a little bit of digging online, found there's really two possible issues for this. One, as if the driver's side is blowing hot air, you're probably low on refrigerant. So that's kind of a clue for that. But if you're having a passenger side issue, which seems to be the most common one, it's a blend door actuator. And that's what we're gonna tackle today. I did buy two of them to replace each side, the driver's side and passenger side, because they're both the same age. And as time consuming as this project is, when I get the dash apart, I wanna go ahead and do both of them at the same time. That way they are done. So I've done videos before, especially when I repaired the heads up display where I've taken the dash out of this car. That's what's required here again. I'll show you guys the steps one more time just so it's all in one video. But if you guys have already seen this video linked above where I removed the full dash to get that heads up display, it's gonna be the same process. First thing we're gonna do is disconnect the battery. We're gonna start by removing the positive lead to the battery. It's gonna require an eight millimeter ratchet or wrench. As I learned last time, we do want to go ahead and take this top off. That's one good thing about these being target tops or convertibles. With that top off, it is a whole lot easier to get this dash out of there. Okay, with that done, we now have access to the car itself. I've already gone ahead and taken the console out, the center console and front bezel here, trim bezel. Requires a 10 millimeter socket and a T15 Torx, just a couple of bolts, a couple of screws to get out, and it's that easy. And going through the rest of this, all it's really gonna require in addition to those is a seven millimeter. As you guys already know, I'm a huge fan of these grip mats, these silicone tool trays, and I've tried a couple different brands of them. I've had the original grip mats that came out a while ago that are phenomenal, but very expensive for little pieces of silicone. Amazon has done their thing, China has done their thing. We have a lot of these knockoffs now that are adequate or sometimes even better. I'll leave a link to my favorite set down below just in case you guys want a pair. Now, as we follow our dash around, we're gonna notice a bunch of these, a bunch of these little black bolts here that are holding it on, three of them across here. And as we go around the car, we'll end up removing the kick panel. The side piece will end up removing both of the A pillars and the grill for the dash vent. That should give us pretty much everything we need along with the glove box to get all these dash screws out. So we're gonna go ahead and start with them. There is a couple, there are three. One, two, three here. You're gonna have on your dash cluster, I know it's not a super wide angle. You're gonna have two, should have, you should have two under your dash. You're gonna have one more back here. You're gonna have up to three 
T15s under your kick panel here that need to come out. I think I only have one remaining. There's gonna be some up in the corners. That's why you gotta take the A pillars off. And then we're gonna have some more under the, the glove box and the dash vent. All right. So far, these are all the same length screws. Okay, next we're going to be popping out this trim panel and behind it is a little plug with a black plastic tab that just unplugs. It is just one of these spring retainer clips that pulls out. Behind it, in this hole here, is another T15 Torx. Once we get that done, we're gonna remove the final T15s from the bottom of the kick panel here. Like I said, I only have one remaining. You guys may have more, especially if this has never been apart. And with that, we should be able to pretty well pry apart all the spring clips. There's another spring clip on this side that holds it in. There we go. Make sure our electronics don't get pinched anywhere. This has seen better days. I've tried to kind of reaffix some of it, but we really need a new one of these. The plastic was shattered by a previous owner. And I noticed that the last time I pulled this apart. Next, we're gonna pull out our A-pillar. If I remember correctly, there's just a couple spring clips behind it. So it pulls out and slides up. There we go. So we've got a spring clip in the bottom, in the middle, and in the top. Now that we're here, we got another seven millimeter. And now we've got one more right up here. This one is a shorter seven millimeter. And that's everything we need to release this side. This is probably one of the harder spots for you to see, but next we're going to just pop this grill cover off. Our twilight and HVAC sensors can unplug. This is what comes out. It's got tabs on the outside of it. That's what locks in. So that's all you have to do is kind of compress the outside, compress the two wings. We did split ours to allow our GPS antenna to come through. Our locking tabs here are the quarter turn twist outs. And they are two different sizes, so you can't mix them up when they go back in. This has an elongated shape where you can see the narrow part is towards the back of the car, the wider part is towards the front of the car. You can't put this in wrong when you reinstall it. Now up front, I believe on both sides here, there's gonna be a seven millimeter that come out. That'll release the center of the dash. Okay, now we're gonna to get to the passenger side. We're gonna start by removing this A-pillar. Remember, it's got the three clip. It's got the three clips. Set that aside. We're gonna have our seven millimeter screws and we're gonna to have to remove this glove box. So, as most of you probably know, in your glove box is your full list of build options for your vehicle along with your VIN for all the parts you may need to order. Inside the glove box, we do have our passenger airbag switch and we've got two of these little covers that need to be pulled off that will expose some screws. We've got some additional fasteners up along the top of it that we're gonna remove and that should get us to drop out this whole glove box unit so we can get the rest of the dash screws out and hopefully have a easier time getting to the blend door actuator. So there are four of these seven millimeter screws here. They are all oriented straight down, not at an angle. Just like before, the seven millimeter bolt right here by the A-pillar is gonna be one of these shorter ones with the big washer. And we're gonna have one more right along the side that is one of the longer seven millimeter bolts that, I've, that we've had. And then under these two little tabs, that are sometimes a pain to pull off. There's nothing holding them other than this little ridge. So you just kind of have to get underneath them and pop them up. There's a 10 millimeter bolt straight in through each of these. About this size, this length that you have to get out. So in the back of our glove box, there's one connector that knows when the glove box is open and closed. And that's just a easy pop out kind of single clip 
Just need a little flathead screwdriver to undo that. Our airbag module, the connector is behind the module. It's got to pull straight out from the glove box. There's nothing, no bolts holding it in, it's just a couple tension retainers. On the back of it, we do have our clip and it does have our little safety tab. So we have to pull this orange tab out and then we can just, with this one little tab, pull the socket out and we can disconnect the glove box from the vehicle to give us a little bit more space to work. And now for the fun part, the dash should be completely loosened. There shouldn't be anything retaining it still. We'll make sure we get our speaker off, go through it, make sure no wires. And then the whole thing, we can see is freeing from this side. We're coming up over the heads up display on that side. And that should be all we need to release the dash and roll it out. All right, here is our dashboard removed. We can see behind it and we can see right off the center here is where our blend door actuators are. So the one that has failed and the code that I've gotten is for this passenger side one out of range. It is pretty easy to see under here. It's a little difficult to access as is. What a lot of people do and what we'll probably do is just pull out this airbag. I know we've had the battery disconnected for a while. There's only a couple bolts holding it in. We'll remove this airbag and that should give us pretty free access to the passenger side blend door actuator. The driver side one, in theory, I've seen people get to without even removing the dash since it all can be gotten to from underneath the car. But since we have all the space up here, we're gonna do it from up here. We're gonna replace both of them and hopefully that's all we need to do. All of these airbag screws are going to be 10 millimeter. So we've got two underneath it. We have got two right here as it connects to the center infotainment stack. And we've got three that connect it to the firewall. That should be all we need to pull it out along with the electronics here on the side. Okay guys, we have successfully removed the dash from the car. It is everything that we remember it being from last time. In talking about the airbag module that we removed, instead of just three, there's actually two more bolts in the side. All of the bolts for the top and the bottom here are all the same length. They're all the longer bolts. The two bolts that went into the center stack here were shorter bolts. So when you take them all apart, you're gonna notice two are a little bit shorter. Those are these two. They do recommend marking the placement of all of them before you remove it. That way when you put it back, all the trim fits correctly. So make sure you have a Sharpie or something like that. That way you can make some marks. Our blend door actuator, the one that we know has failed is this one right here. We've got pretty good access to it right now. There's not a whole lot that we need to do to get to this one. What I'm gonna note is the placement of our doors inside right now. Inside, we've got this one that's all the way up and that one that's all the way down, if you can see that. So this is the actuated door, I believe, that needs replaced. We're gonna go ahead and take care of that. So in preparing and cleaning up for this, I did find this clear hose with this particular connector that looks like it at one point had a hose attached to it. Has just been chilling down here. I'm struggling to find any missing connector here or anything online that specifies this particular one if you guys know what this plugs into, please let me know. So on this actuator here, there are two of these screws here, two of these bolts. They're five and a half millimeter and a pretty coarse thread. They come out pretty quickly. And then there's one electrical connector that just has a little tab on top that pulls straight out. And from there, we have access to our blend door actuator being loose. It should just come right out. All right guys, so I took apart the one that I knew to be bad, the actual blend door actuator. And just like everyone I'd seen online, when I moved out this top gear, I noticed that the primary gear here, the one that's attached to the actual blend door itself, has a big crack in it. So it's not spinning, it's not grabbing onto the spline anymore, not able to turn or actuate the passenger side. And that's what causes the failure, this little plastic gear here with that split in it. Everyone I've seen, this is exactly what happens. And just like that, our new blend door actuator is installed. These little white panels inside here, if you guys can see down in there, 
That is what's connected basically to these arms and there's really no tension on them. This only goes in one way. There's a little spline in there, kind of a, a groove on both sides. So it only fits onto that actuator one way so it doesn't spin. If it's not lined up right away, you can just twist that little knob or press the little white piece inside to get it where you need it. And then it'll just slide right in very easily. Two screws that go in, they are not very tight at all. So don't strip them and get our one connector back. And that is the passenger side. We're gonna go ahead and move on to the driver's side and hopefully this will be all we need. Okay, that one was quite a pain. I did end up pulling out this little expansion chamber that was between the vacuum tubing and pulling out this vacuum tube and moving it, this AC vent and moving it. They both come out pretty easily, but be gentle with them. I know they're old. They still have some flex to them, but don't crack them. All right, guys, we've got them both replaced now. Everything seems to be hooked up as far as the HVAC system goes. So what I'd like to do now I'm a little hesitant with everything unplugged here, airbag and whatnot, to go through and start the car, but I at least want to go ahead and put it the on position just to see if the HVAC turns on and see if I'm getting any codes for the HVAC system, if it's detecting any errors and making sure all the blend doors are activating like they're supposed to. All right, guys, we've done our function test of the car. Everything seems to be working. Both blend doors are actuating just fine. I ran the codes and there are no codes currently. So I think we've solved our at least bipolar problem. I still don't know what that one vacuum line does in the car. It doesn't really seem to be missing from anywhere, so I'm not quite sure. Everything else seems to be working just fine. We're gonna go ahead and put the dash back in the car. I think everything is ready. I'm not gonna chronicle a whole lot of the dash going back in the car. It is literally just the exact opposite of when it came out of the car. I am gonna take this opportunity to clean a few things to make sure it's ready to go back in, vacuum some of that disintegrating insulation, that sort of thing. Make sure the windshield's clean, stuff like that that I can't really get to normally. I'm gonna make sure I clean. The rest of it will just go back together. If there's any parts you need, such as the hazard switch, I know is a common failure point for these cars while the dash is out. Now's a great time to do it any of the heads-up display work that I've done before. Again, video should be up in the description. That's a good time to do it. Now is really a good time to go through it and replace anything that needs to be done here so you don't have to pull this out multiple times like I have in only the three years of ownership I've had this car. Let's go ahead and get it back together and see how it drives. This really was a pretty easy job. It was time consuming and frustrating, but easy. There was nothing that required an immense amount of skill to do. It was nothing that was really that complicated. It was just a lot of little things to get to where we were. This car being a target top made things exponentially easier. If you have one of the Z06 models or fixed roof coupes, it'll be a little harder to get that dashboard out of there. It's still doable. These are big wide doors. You still can, just a little bit diff more difficult than with a target top or convertible. Thank you guys for watching this video. I know we haven't had a lot of Corvette content lately and we really need to get back to it. We're getting closer to solving a couple issues with it to make it a viable daily option again. When we do that, there'll be a lot more with it. If you like this content, make sure you like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. If there's something specific that you want to see or some specific question you have, feel free to leave it in the comments below. We'll see what we can do to bring it to you. Otherwise, thanks for watching 4K Motoring. I'm Chris. We'll see you next time.